Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I am Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Benucci, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail and our passion is sharing that with you every week. Hey, Phil. Hey, Kenny. Namash. How are you? Fun. Nice to meet you. Heard enough about you. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah, some of it pretty good, too. Not always, but that guy's never, you know, you know the way he is. Yeah, he's a little, he looks a little shady, man. He said, you know what? He does what he dances on that edge, right? Like, you're never too sure where he's really going to be at. I'm not enjoying this podcast already. Too bad. <laughs> good. That's a very, very, podcast, Kenny. It's a very, very bad idea to put the two of you in the same room. <laughs> yeah, it's already. I used to call it parallel worlds colliding, man. It's what happens, um, man. It's a Seinfeld episode. I, I, exactly. I, I'm, I'm unhappy about this choice. Um, <laughs> yeah, you chose it. Don't, don't look at us. We just going for the ride. <laughs> yeah, we're just here, man. Like you said, it was going to be fun, and I don't have anything to prepare. So exactly, oh, he said you show up at ten o'clock. We showed up at ten. Like, what the hell do you want? Yeah, I um, I'm, I, you know what? I having te- technical difficulty. Uh, 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 bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to stop us from talking. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, do you want me to blur my background? No, 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 no. Okay. We are we're an unblurred, unedited, couch. unrehearsed, un we're un. Yeah, totally not, un. we're just an unpodcast, is what we are. Go um, on. I will do I will do a quick intro. I don't yeah. think it's actually gonna be quick, but um we have Nimesh Jaspal with us, and he's the CEO of Gain Ops. Um and, and Nimesh is gonna talk about it some more, but um I think what makes this so amazing is Namesh and I, we've known each other a really long time. I like call it 30 years or so. Uh, Namesh and I went to school together. Um, he's a he's a Canadian that um, has found the smarter way by hiding himself away in California while the rest of us freeze to death up here. Um, so he's smarter than me already. And then, uh, and then the truth is like, like, what the fuck, man? I've known you like thirty years. Like, it's it's a long time. Kind of insane. Actually, uh, over thirty years. You've I was doing the math. He said imagine. school. Yeah, I know how old he is. That you can add a couple more years to the point of thirty. <laughs> so it's like at least thirty-four, if not thirty-five. Thirty-five. Years. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah. Because I guess I wasn't really actually counting school. I was counting after school. But, yeah. but the truth is, yeah, you know, it's the age part. A very age. long time, a very, very long time. But um, yeah, and I'm, I'm excited um, to have, I mean, so it's weird that Namesh, someone that I've known, like, for a very long time, and then Kenny, who really we've not known each other nearly as long right like kenny and i have really been together like six years right half years like i feel you know like you know one six and one thirty plus but i don't feel i feel like you know kindred spirits on on the same level right because um you know we've just connected that way so so kind of weird for me but super excited to have you on um, and if I do the intro is Nimesh is this guy, he was super smart in school. Um, he was uh, super smart out of school. He lives in California and away from the snow, which already makes him really smart. And then if you think about, and then gain ops is this organization that, um, that Nimesh runs that has been really like data focused, right? So they're one of these orgs that, um, not, not like don't think of it like Namesh drowns in spreadsheets or anything like that. It's actually more the opposite is he is that guy that you call when you are drowning in spreadsheets and he starts to help you figure out like what is on the spreadsheets that you need to pay attention to. What you do you need to be thinking about? How does it change your business? Um, You know, because I think we talk to so many small and medium brands that, um, you know, we talk about the need for data, we talk about the need for insights, but sometimes you get data and you don't know what the fuck to do with it, to be honest, right? 
Um, and I think, you know, gain ops is one of these places that you call <laughs> where they can start to wrestle your data down and then figure out, you know, what you can draw from it. Um, so that's the most formalized intro I can do. And that feels weird because you are an old, old friend that to have to do come some sort of formal intro in intro. Um, what we'd love to do, um, what we kind of do on the podcast is to kind of, we'd love to hear a bit about your journey. Um, how you got to where you are. Um, we will definitely, both Kenny and I are data heads. We love insights. We love, there isn't anything that gets either of us going more than to go and start picking at data. Um, we, we're like happiest, yeah, we're, we're happiest, like, you know, parsing data and trying to figure out like what is in there, what growth rates are there, what things can we derive? So We'll get there sooner than later as well. But um, I'm going to shut up now. Namesh, Journey, tell us, you know, leave me out of it. But, you know, all those other things, like where you come from and then and then how you got to where you are. Uh, thank you, Phil. Thank you, Kenny, for having me on the podcast. It's a really interesting, uh, you know, phenomenon for me as well, having known at least uh, Phil for a long time. Um, my journey has been a very interesting one, and I found data by accident, I would say. So I spent six years in manufacturing, and some, some aspects of that was the American Food and Drug Administration. So we were, uh, this is up in Canada, like I spent six years in manufacturing, and I worked throughout school. So not a big deal, but like it was very interesting to do that, and now... I'd never thought that that experience would come in handy, but I actually know what happens on the factory floor and all the way to what happens to the final reporting, you know, when you report at the end of the day and how do you use those numbers to your benefit. And in between, between those two bookends, um, I worked for the government of Ontario, I worked for IBM in marketing, I worked for... And in the process of leaving IBM, I worked for, uh, you know, I realized data, the power of data. So it took me almost 10, 11 years to figure out that data was where I was good at and something the world wanted to pay uh, on that. And one of the most interesting things was, you know, and which may be relevant to your food and beverage business is like, you know, it was very controlled environments. Um, you know, back in, so for example, it was the, again, the Food and Drug Administration, all the regulations and everything else, but everything comes to an end with data. And the gain ops is the third iteration of the same problem is like, you know, in the middle, I went and incubated a company that productized the consulting. But what I realized is it was not a problem that could be productized. Some elements of it was, but the data, everybody implements different uh, yeah, systems and implements them differently. So the data rules are very different. So that's what I've made my living on, and I built an entire team. And the reason for me to build a team is because data, you know, the universities teach programming. The vendors provide training on their tools, but like who teaches data? You just pick it up along the way. And that's where, uh, you know, my expertise is we picked up along the way. I saw the potential of data, how it goes from end to end. Would you, the mistake that you make here is amplified up here in the final reporting. It's known as the butterfly effect sometimes. Right. A butterfly, uh, you know, flutters its wings in somewhere in Europe or the, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the Sahara Desert and it rains in the Amazon. So totally unrelated uh, effects. Uh, you may have heard of it as it's referred to as the gazelle effect as well. Same effect. You know, gazelles runs and they uh, pick up, they, they kick off the dust and it rains in the Amazon. And there's a whole chain in between. It's the same effect with data. So it's been a very interesting journey. So, because I, because I feel, well, Phil tries to explain things to me a lot of times and doesn't necessarily sync, but so what exactly do you do, Namesh? Like, I understand you play in the data field and that's where you came from, but what is it that you actually, like, what, what do you do or what do, would I do with you or what would you do for me? So, uh, Kenny, the way, easiest way to think about it is technically it's the data, but, you know, what I would say, whoop-de-doo. Right. You know, what good is the data? 
So we focused on revenue. How yeah. do you increase the revenue of an organization and the profitability of the organization? Right. If you're in the sell stage, it's the revenue that matters. Right. If you plan to keep the company for a long time, it's the the profitability of the right. company. Right. So it's the we use that data, and it the data changes. The issue with data is that it's the whole process and the business is that the whole process is not in a singular system. So for example, you use a different system for marketing. You use, uh, and you may use the same system for a CRM, you know, for your sales, but usually not, uh, just because the business rules are, or the rules implemented by the vendor are different. And then you go to an ERP system when that right. person actually becomes a customer. So now you have three systems for the whole process. So we harmonize the data across the three systems. Okay, or, so you know, three okay. And especially if you've grown by acquisition, now you have six of those. Six yeah, or more. Or more, right? You know, if you've grown by acquisition even more, I was, just, you know, and but at the end of the day, uh, Nimesh Jaspal is, you know, regardless of the system you're in, there's only one Nimesh Jaspal, and now I can represent it myself under many, many different uh, variations. So it could be N S Jaspal, yeah. is it N Jaspal? Is it Nimesh J? Right. Or is it well? Are they the same people or different people? So you have a lot of attribution on that. Oh boy. <laughs> Are you okay? That did not sound good. Tell me. Well, more. no, because you start you because again, you know, it's because most of the work, work most of the stuff I do is in smaller businesses, right? Who don't have the benefit of um, ERPs, et cetera. So the data is even that much more interesting to find and to bind together right yeah, but I mean, I can see it. Is oh my god but well, then i can see it like when you get into you know especially in acquisition and depends on, on how many acquisitions you do you could have 12 15 systems by the because a lot of times they buy it doesn't mean overnight you migrate uh systems so the data is in one bucket like you can run independent for years and if you've acquired two or three people like you can have multiple independent systems within the company but now within this greater company like and i'm yeah and how do you put all that data into one spot so someone can make a decision to do something anything so, kenny that's an excellent question by the way uh you know very few companies or people think about that uh, that way but that is you reality be kind to him by the way you know, just because you know what, just I'm, I'm, I'm looking the yeah, and... and... <laughs> No, this is me. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she just well, do you. Don't worry. Don't listen to him. This is a two-person podcast. Right now, it's just me and you. <laughs> so the 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 reality is, data is often afterthought, right? Hey, we, uh, and the asset test that we often uh, say and use is like it's, you know. Uh, 12 noon or 1 p.m. on the 31st of December. Would you rather close the deal and get the sale in, or would you rather pay attention to the data? So I often think that data is an afterthought, and we've built systems around that, is to say it's an afterthought. Just fill in the required fields and we do it. So you just need the minimum amount of data, and you'd be surprised. You know, like all the ERP systems, for example, when you're doing an online system for transaction, for example, is, you know, you could have the most sophisticated system like an SAP or multiple SAP instances, but, and, you know, SAP is as big as it gets. And I'm just using that as an example. Uh, the, the reality of that is, you know, do you just, you just need one field, which is the quantity of the, of the inventory that you have to get your, your online system working. It doesn't, the rest doesn't matter, right? And inherent in that is the understanding that, hey, your online system and your ERP system has the same uh, product information, right. right? But once that is done, you only need one field. And by the way, to your, uh, to your spreadsheet comment, the largest companies still use spreadsheets. Yeah. For example, Amazon, which is the biggest retail company that you can get, they have such unique processes that an ERP system, they couldn't be codified. It couldn't be codified as a standard system. 
So they ran on, and they still do, they run on spreadsheets. I hope that answers, you know, gives you a glimpse into the, the world that we deal with, but it's a lot of it is uh, spreadsheets and some of it is organized systems and data. Wow, the fact they're still running on spreadsheets um, that we I, live in, which we know is really not the way to do it, but. Well, but that's reality. Uh, can I, you know, that, I know, I know. That is business reality. Like, you know, would, right. you, would you rather do uh, implement a system that does implicates like in its own business rules, you have a rigor and now your business processes change. Yeah. Right. Like how do you do your quota systems? You don't do that in an organized systems. Most companies don't, you do it in an Excel spreadsheet. So yeah. we just bring that in like, Hey, how are you measuring against quota? Like I think about, hmm. you know, can you, you think about like all of the things you know, when we go through the planning process with customers, like all these sort of things and like the thinking work that you need to do, you know, but in, in ratio of things that need to get done, like 80% of your work isn't thinking 80% is compiling, normalizing, trying to figure out, do I have the right number in here? Did it calculate right? Did I screw up a formula somewhere else that's dependent on this to be able to get to a spot? And then you know, eight days of that goes by and then you've got 20% of your time actually focused on, you know, like, okay, let's, let's put some colors in here and see like, what comes up green, what comes up red, what comes right. up yellow, what am I alarmed at? What am I not alarmed at? What do I gotta, what does it mean to tell me? Right. And I think that's the part when I was talking to Namesh that made me really intrigued because that's why I said, you, you've got to come on, right? Because there are people we know for a fact there are people you know in businesses in 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 this cohort that listen to us that that's what they're doing is they're spending like a million hours you know throwing spreadsheets together only maybe sometimes you realize fuck i did it all wrong right like i like i i my source sheets i pulled the wrong assumption or i got the wrong data on the wrong axes you know if you're a sort of Excel skilled, like I'm pretty Excel skilled, so I could go back and figure out how do I undo my mistakes so I can rearrange axes and things like that. Most people wouldn't, they would just wipe it out and start again. And so by the time you're done, you're going, well, fuck if I know, like I could, I could sit here and look at these damn spreadsheets all day, or I could go out and just do something and see if it, <laughs> see if it works. Right. So, you know, to me, it was, it was interesting because um, I don't know if I've got that right, Nimesh, so you'll have to tell me, but I feel like, the thing that you do just helps me get to the thinking bits faster. Do you know, Kenny? Like, so well, I'm, I'm not, what he's trying, not, what he's not trying to do. With, you know, he knows that's my world. Yeah, even more so than his in a lot of ways. Because I have yeah. two companies, and I shit you not, I spend more time in spreadsheets because none of these small companies, nothing's integrated, right? So nothing talks to each other. Yeah. Tables don't talk to receivables. Sales doesn't talk to Mark. Nothing talks to anything. And then there's accounting over there. Like it's just a fucking shit show. And data so, Kenny, is just so that you know, just so that you know, the largest semiconductor company, uh, one of the largest, I should say, in the top five international company at that. Yeah. Had four systems, two ERP systems and two CRM systems that didn't talk to each other. How so do you do the product insanity. company in there? Yeah. How do you get it out of the door? How do you get credit? Their biggest issue was if they didn't claim credit for that sale, they wouldn't get it. Now exactly. you reduce that to the smaller issue is like, okay. And what Phil was talking about is like, hey, instead of business, uh, focusing on the business, you're now focused on getting the spreadsheet right. Well, and I think that's where I, where he knows my frustrations is I spend a lot of time there where I'd rather be is I don't want to spend the time in the building of the spreadsheet. I like when I'm finally to the point where I think I'm clean and think is a key word is I just like looking at the data now. What is this actually telling me or what yeah. story am I going to glean yeah. from this or what story do I want to make up? Because there's times, you know, numbers are numbers. They tell you a story, but I can spin a story and I can spin a number. The problem we have a lot of times is I don't know if those numbers are accurate because I spent so much fucking time in the spreadsheet trying to figure out what the hell I'm trying to do. 
but it's by the time I get to the end date, I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, I hope I did that right. <laughs> because otherwise I just got bad it, data. It, you can do it all right, right? But here's a, another challenge that we've often see in our meetings. You come up with the number and then Phil comes up with a number. I know. Whose yeah. number is correct? Seriously? No, it's well, it's gonna be I'm I'm mine. It's mine. Time it's mine. I'm Asian. So I definitely know the number better than Kenny. So it's definitely. So instead better. of moving the business forward, Wow. Now you're spending more time talking about whose number is correct, whose spreadsheet well, is correct. You know that that is what happens. That is sort of the real life. What's worse, Namesh, is when two people come up with the number, but there's three numbers. Yeah, yes. That's the fun one. Because <laughs> then you're looking thinking, wow, okay, that's that's a good one. Like, where'd the other one come from? <laughs> exactly. But even, even the, I mean... You get there and even the interpretation of what goes in the number, like all that shit that. But that's arguments all the time. Like finance will do that. Like they'll put numbers yeah. in there. You're in sales will say, but that's not my number. Yeah. I don't want it in mine. And marketing yeah. will do the same or someone else will say, well, yeah, I know, but you're, you're screwing my number now. Well, can and you then you're about one time. month, right? Like we got to do this 12 times in the year. I was just about to say, you know, yeah. Phil, I think you and I had a uh, Vulcan mind melt. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day. It's like, you know, like clockwork, whenever you're doing your planning, yeah. whenever you're doing your budgeting, whenever you're doing your board reporting, it's a thankless job. Yeah, it's totally. Like, you know, instead of moving the, and I, uh, I get stuck on like, hey, let's move the business forward. Right. Right. You, it's a thankless job. Like get, just get it done. Outsource it if you have to. It's an yeah. independent third party. And that's our biggest economic reason of why we exist is like we're an independent third party that gives you a consistent set of data across multiple spreadsheets, across multiple systems. It doesn't matter to us. Right. We all, well, we what, what, size, what size of companies are you typically working with? Though? Like what, like what is sort of, um, I'm, I'm going to flack, but like what sort of, what's the magic number? Like when would somebody be knocking at the door and saying, listen, you know, I'm at a size or I don't know, whatever that means. Maybe it's it's a small company, maybe it's large, but like what's sort of your, I don't know, spot? Let me take that on, right? Uh, let me answer you slightly differently. Every sure. large company, right? So we work across every, the whole gamut, like, you know, from a solopreneur uh, to a large company, and okay. I mean an international company, uh, international top five, Fortune five, uh, if you will. Yeah, they all have the same problem because the it, the issue is that regardless of the size of the company, they all started as a single idea or as a single team. Right, team being no more than one or two or three people. <clears throat> right, right. That's the founding team. Like you know, you have more than three people, it doesn't go anywhere. Like you, you can, you don't have to take my word for it, but you can actually research this. Like, you know, what's the size of the founding team? Apple, for example, the biggest retail uh, name in retail started with three people down yeah. to two, right? And now down to uh, to professional management. It doesn't matter. They have the same system. The advantage of getting your data numbers right is like it allows you to move your business forward. Right. Right. That's what the issue, that's what real, the focus really should be, not on the data. No. What's hmm. um okay? So, uh, sir Phil, uh, just yeah. to answer Kenny's question yeah. because I don't think I did that very succinctly. Is uh, the time to engage with us, right? Where we find the most success is when you can no longer run the business in your head, and you now need to communicate to the second person. Right. I I was going to ask you that actually because I think I think that's important so let's let's take that one one more step is i can't manage it in my head i need i need help so what do you like what does it look like like are you you know because i think if i'm a founder i'm struggling with all the things rattling around in my head i'm struggling with manufacturing i'm worried about the numbers i gotta get numbers out if i bring you in are you now going to give me another system i've got to worry about like what, what is that how do you figure out what i have and then how do you figure out how to help someone like yeah, how do you uncomplicate sort of me as well it's, yeah. it's sort of that same thing like do i yeah. just now have another thing to worry about um 
you know, the minute you engage with another company or another thing, and it's nothing to do with gain ops or with me or my company, right? Mm -hmm. But the minute you engage with it, you've introduced some complexity into the system. So we being cognizant of that, being recognizing that we've actually made it very simple. And the simplicity of that is we don't have any software to implement. Right. We can okay. work with your software, whatever you have on prem or in the cloud, it doesn't matter. Okay. We take the data from there, clean it up. We can give it back to you or we have the rules uh, that we uh, uh, implement with every time we get the data. Some people, uh, it was a Canadian manufacturing company, actually, uh, you know, that gave us the data on a, as a dump every night. We turned around and, uh, you know, the the COO, uh, the CEO of the firm basically said, wow, it doesn't matter what systems he has. He just looked at the dashboard of the customer 360. Hey, what is my status of the customer? Because the reality is you cannot sell to a customer if you if that if they have like five open key issues with your product. Right. So, you know, no point hiring a salesperson and spending money and, you know, having them to look, you know, just having them because you have them and you can say, you can brag to your friends to say like, oh, I have, you know, a sales team, but they're not producing numbers for you because, hey, the customers will not buy if they have issues. And so how do you find all that information? Either you log into five or 10 different systems or 15 uh, different systems, or you get it all into the same picture, into the same uh, pane of glass, if you will, or the same dashboard. Yeah, that makes sense to me. No, it makes total sense. Yeah. And it's it's kind of awesome, right? Because then you you really do you start skipping. I, I'm laughing because Kenny and I worked as uh fractionals for for a company and I think every like the first actually like today is the Mar is March first, right? So on the first and the second, that's what we'd be asking for. And we'd have to ask for it every month, right? Is hi, do you do you have numbers? Like can you can you pull stuff down? Can you you know, can you please, you know, we need these. And then Kenny would go, well, I have this one. I have that one. Do you have, you know, wait, you know, don't do that one. I did that one, you know, and then the two of us would start putting this thing together. And like three days in, you go, hang on a second. Like, this doesn't look anything like what we would, what we did last month. Right. And you go, yeah. fuck, right. Like, you know, but I'm trying to tell a consistent story. Like, oh, now I got to go figure out, open that grid and see how did I create that chart so I can, replicate the chart and show the growth that comes out of it. you know like all these things that i feel like you just covered you know by by being kind of that steady presence on board yeah and that's, that's what i'm feeling sorry can you say that I'm again saying, I'm, I'm just reading, i i he wants to give you a hug exactly what, yeah <laughs> i'll give you guys a virtual hug man <laughs> Oh my God! That's a smart one. So guess what we're doing today? Okay, what? Data dumps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I was about to ask a rhetorical question, and no yeah. answer is required. Is you know, would you when you were hired as uh, as uh, as fractionals, and you spent three days working with the data, was the company like? You know, were you just working with the data or moving the business forward? And I, I, and I would suspect that you were just working with the data versus having the data ready to go. That's well, right. But that's just it. It's, and it's not three days. By the time you're doing, by the time you really get into the analysis of the data, which is what you should be doing to try to figure out where you're going backwards and how to stop that or move it forward or whatever you're trying to do, you're day 15 and now you're already worried about the next month's data. Yep. You know, exactly. which is which is even the worst story because you're really to what you guys what we started with 80% of the time is in data collection, data amalgamation, data cleansing, and then 20% of the time, and it's the wrong ratio. Actually, I, was, Kenny, I would push back it, even on the 20%. I think it's roughly about five to seven. Okay, I was trying to be friendly. I mean, it's it's probably even less than that. That's the saddest part. And you know, it, it, seriously, it's 2024 and we're talking about, sh we got so much automation on this planet and we're spending so little time on the important part, which is looking at and say, okay, what is this telling me and how do I go forward based on what I'm seeing? Not 
how long is it going to take me to get this to the point where I can talk about what we just sort of talked about? Yeah. And I can't spend 95% of my time just collecting, amalgamating and cleaning and only 5% on the time and using it. There's no sense to this. Exactly that. Right. And people have different definitions as well. Like, you know, if you ask, uh, uh, you know, who a customer is, for example, right? So having strategic conversations with the team, and it doesn't have to be frequent, it doesn't have to be long, but, you know, an hour to four hours, uh, you know, Zoom or in person, it doesn't matter, right? right? You know, it, it, uh, ha- getting the right definitions of things is really important to further that business. Well, it's even the speed of it too, Namesh, like we we're saying is, you know, if on the first, it's already too late to look at the last 29 days of the month I just ended. Cause you know why it's all rear view mirror. It's past. Yep. Exactly. I've already passed that town. I mean, I'm not going back to go to the cafe. That's 30 miles behind me. It's too late. So how do I look ahead? But if I'm now spending the next two weeks, still looking in the past to get it up to date, by the time I start looking ahead, I'm now six weeks from the starting point. Yep. Right. Yeah, no, exactly that, Kenny. And, you know, let me let me talk about, you know, when companies look at numbers, they may not be looking at the complete set of numbers. Oh, that's definitive. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, come on, man. That's just crazy talk. What oh, are you yeah, talking about? There. Everybody oh, looks at, you know, the complete. No, yeah. You know, Phil, let me talk about, uh, for example, <laughs> right? Cost of customer acquisition. Right. Yeah. Or customer acquisition uh, cost is CAC. Yeah. Right. People look at a CAC number and they're just really happy. But what they should really be looking at is not only CAC by itself, but they should be looking at what is the payback period for that customer. Right. And it needs to be at the customer, individual customer number. Right. The metric, because it may cost like five bucks to acquire me. Uh, and it may take like, you know, uh, uh, seven bucks to acquire somebody else. And I'm just using very small numbers. Right. Right. And for example, one of the companies that we work with and they did the S in the HTTPS in your browser, uh, they realized that, you know, the their numbers were off. Their numbers were off. They were actually not being profitable. Again, when you look at one number in isolation, your CAC might be $5 to your point, the other seven, but the seven might be a better one to have. Exactly. It might cost me more to get, but you're way more profitable. Again, you're not looking at the full picture. And that's our problem is you get snippets. And what you're praying to God is the snippet you're looking at is the one that's going to move the needle in the right direction. And a lot of times we spend that because on your example, you know what the first thing you do? Well, five is the better number. We should uh, the the of it, you're right on because but the payback is like you know three dollars and i'm out you've actually exactly, lost but $2 all, all i saw was the five five yeah. better than seven it was cheaper that's yeah. the guy but you know the guy you spent seven dollars on like the payback is going to be like you know uh two hundred dollars exactly but Whereas exactly. You're not you need two data on points the i think yeah, i need two data points i need both yeah, uh, well, you need more than that. And I well, think back on of, this example per se, right? Yeah. But you're right. It's just amalgamating all of them. Say, okay, give me the greater, the greater, broader yeah. picture. Like, what yeah. is this? Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but I also think, and I think where Nimesh, like, I'm, I'm curious is, is when you get, you know, because we do, we have a lot of young founders. We have some. Um, it's funny because we, 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 um. We kind of have a kitty of like six or seven episodes and so just before you we recorded with someone who is going through another episode. fundraise right so he's going through another round of fundraising he's um in the beverage industry and just doing some like crazy groundbreaking things right but you think in those cases the things that he's going through you know he he's overcome like some serious you know manufacturing like all these sort of things to kind of get to where he is but, you know, now he's got investors and people like that going, you know, you know, what's what's going on over there? Are you are you you know, are you making money? And like if I apply just the CAC conversation, you know, the cost of acquisition, there's a flip side, right, is if I'm worried about just that single metric, I haven't thought about. All the other things that might come into play that. May or may not tell me if I'm viable in the future. 
in, you, you know, right? You, you're right on uh, is yeah. the key. You know, the reason I started uh, consulting in this area, right? And, you know, going back historically is a company I used to work for, and it's a documented case, right? The company I used to work for, they went through a bankruptcy proceeding, through a court proceeding. So it's an open document. Wow. And the analysis of their accounting firm, the audit accounting firm for the court, was that this company lost, you know, was losing money every time they built or they sold something. But that number was obfuscated by the revenue number. Right. It was hidden by the revenue number. Like, hey, the money's coming in. Like, you know, how could I go bankrupt? That's like saying, hey, how could I run out of money in my bank account when I still have checks? But don't that you know that that's how most companies will run. Yeah. It's bank account balance. Yes. And it's only a problem when it gets to zero. And then someone says, but we're doing 50 million in sales. It's impossible yeah. that we cannot be making money. And you're thinking, well, yeah, if you're doing 55 million in expenses, it's very clear how you can't make money on 50 million. It's not exactly. rocket science, guys. Yeah. And, you know, Phil, uh, you said something very interesting about like, you know, raising money and everything yeah. else. Like, rather, yeah. whether that is your, whether that is your first round or your subsequent rounds, yeah. there's only one thing that the investors are uh, curious about, you know, and th this is apart from, hey, I just like you, I'll give you money and I'll bet on you. Uh, past that stage, it's like, Wait, I wait, mean, sorry. Do you I know investors that would do that? Because I got a product to sell if you have investors that are like. And I'm pretty likable. Like, I could be likable if I have to be. So, I'm, <laughs> if that's all it's going to be. There's a whole other revenue stream to match that we could set up for you here if that's. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I have some, I have some sand to sell you in Arizona, man. It's all that's good. It's nice to bomb California out of the way. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Please continue. So, no, exactly, right? So the question of, and you can only pay out of profitability, right? Because raising money is raising money. You can you can raise more money and then it's a Ponzi scheme, right? It's an inverse pyramid. The, that's you're that's just raising more money to pay the first round of the previous round of people, mm -hmm. but that's illegal, if you will. You know, at least in the US, it is illegal. And in Canada, I think it is illegal still. It's illegal everywhere. It's immoral. Like you're not doing yeah. You're not helping anybody. It's just wrong. Right. So the only way to pay an investor back is through your profit profits. Yeah, right. not rocket science. It's not rocket science from that perspective, but the, your profitability is is at question. Yeah. So what are your margins, if you will? And Might that's where the CAC and the payback period comes in really handy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I, I like this because I think, I think it's something that our listeners, you know, we've, we've come a long way. We've got founders that, you know, started from nothing. They've, they've all got amazing businesses, but you think this year of all years, right? Like investors are, they're nervous, right? Because there's, kind of like there's a lot of businesses in trouble and so if i'm a shareholder i'm i'm or an investor i'm calling right like what do i do do i call every week do i call every month do i find out what you're doing like but if you play that forward now it's i if i was blowing off you know board meetings every quarter or something like that because before money was okay well, and, money was also cheap. you know Exactly. Yeah, right. But but now it's it's not so cheap, right? And and so I, I need to know if I have more risk. Um so I just feel like um mm -hmm. you know being organized in your conversations with these folks is helpful. Um, organized and you have to have a story to tell. Yeah. Regardless who builds a story, and that story is to based is based on the actual numbers. Yeah. Because you know, you could have an opinion. I could have an opinion, a third yeah. person could have an opinion, but yeah. the reality of that is, what do the data tell us? Yeah, yeah. and we always say that, Namesh. Numbers, numbers tell the story. Your right. feelings are good, and I love the fact you feel something, and that's really important, but it doesn't do shit for my business. He, he, the numbers he will tell me care. what I should be feeling. He doesn't and care what he, you feel, know, by the way. He, he really doesn't. That's not, it's so untrue, it's so untrue. Penny, I have a great story for you. If so, it's about Phil, even better. Oh. Yeah, it's a franchise business out of uh, Toronto. The head office is out of Toronto. It's yeah. a publicly listed company. 
and we did some work with them. And just as it was almost like, uh, you know, yeah, okay, whatever. What are you going to tell me? I'm the CEO. I've been a CFO, uh, you know, of the company. I have a I have a chartered accountant degree. I know my numbers really well, inside out. So um, I said, uh, and the guy, the CEO's name is Jeff. And, uh, you know, I said, Jeff, just out of curiosity, what business are you in? And he said, hey, I'm in the subscription business. It's like $99 per month. Even in the downturns, we don't, uh, we don't worry about that. Right. When we looked at the data, right, what we realized is that they'd actually acquired a lot of customers along the way that were over 500000 over a million dollars in, in revenue just by the dent of the business that they were in. And they were no longer a $99 per month subscription fact. And what we also realized is like they had scheduled, uh, and they were in the truck-based business, by the right. way. Delivery uh -huh. business, uh, right? yeah. So uh, they realized is that, hey, you know, and it, what Jeff said to me is like, it doesn't cost him anything extra to pick up my stuff on an on-call basis. I think the idea was really good when they first started out, but they were doing a lot of on-call, unscheduled calls that they're running the truck up and down for. Yes, that's versus, different than just picking up on the way. Just versus picking up on the way. And we would not have, there was no way this guy would have ever figured out unless he was you know, responsible for right. that specific number right. or that dashboard. So in the end, what he did, or what I think they did, is that they changed the compensation business, uh, uh, sorry, the compensation systems or the, uh, the methodology of how they uh, enhanced their mm -hmm. sales reps. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking every sales rep as a $99 a month system and now they just need to buy more, is they changed it to say, hey, let's look at the value of the business that you bring in. And yeah. they divided their sales team into two. People who just brought in the $99 a month business and people who were doing going after large accounts like the insurance companies, like the healthcare systems right. and so on. Right. So that's an example of what the insight gets you. It gets you to think about your business. There's a gap between what you think you is happening in the field and what is actually happening in the yeah. field. It's identifying that gap and orienting the team towards that. That's yeah. your, uh, that's the work that you do as a leader, and that, but you need some help with that. You're well, starting to really that numbers. Play, obviously, that's that's what the numbers will tell you. Again, yep. it's always the same thing. It's feelings versus facts. Exactly. Right on. It's not, again, it's nothing that complicated. The challenge that most of us have is getting to the facts. Yes. So what ends up happening, you just run on feelings because you can't find the facts. There's almost exactly. not enough time to go get facts. I think you're right, Phil, because by the 15th of the month that you're that you're in, talking about the month that you passed, really doesn't move the ball. Well, it's, it's, well if anything, it could move it, it moves in the wrong direction. Exactly. <laughs> Or unless you get lucky and most people seem to just get a little luck for a while and things happen. So they just continue on and not realizing that, listen, you had a few horseshoes or might've been things that you really weren't in your control benefited you. And that's great. But yep. long-term, you know, uh, Kenny, there's other, uh, there's another issue that comes to my mind, right? One of the leading reasons why people actually don't uh, want, uh, you know, somebody to look at their data is it feels like that they're hiding something right not not that they are or they may right. not be but it feels like they're hiding something right and the fact that they are going to be somebody like who's going to be either putting a spotlight on them yeah or a flashlight on them like you know very focused to say like hey explain these numbers to to me is very uncomfortable for them and that is the leading reason why some some of the people don't do business with us. I, I can totally see that though, because we've been around enough uh, companies where, and it typically starts running uphill where you get upper management or people that let's say should know, because really you should know, but don't know. And the thing is when you start digging and asking questions is very uncomfortable because you're, you're questioning them in essence. 
or the feeling will be that, which is, and it's right. a feeling that's valid because we are questioning you, but it doesn't have to be, it's not, we're not the Gestapo here. It's not about, you know, some regime that we're all going to shoot everybody who disagrees with. We're trying to just get to the facts. And if you don't know, you don't know, that's fine. Right. Let's and all then, get to how we do know, and then we can all move forward. And Kenny, it also changes the conversation, right? Instead of saying like, you know, so uh, before they, somebody has a dashboard or a, sales uh, leaderboard or a code to cash cycle sure. depending upon which uh, de depending upon which area of the company you want to focus on first is like you know instead of saying like oh i think you could do this better right that's a think i think that's a feeling it's a feeling versus to say like hey you know they look at the data they look at the dashboard and say explain these two these numbers right. to me Right. Yeah. It changes the exec's conversation instead of being very confrontational, like, you know, to say hey, you could be wrong and somebody like, how can you argue with if you've sold five dollars worth of business in the month? How can you sell them with that? Like, you know, oh, I have a long a lot of pipeline. Hey, let's look at the pipeline of sales now. Yeah. Right? And let's you keep need... validating what yes. we think. And you may find that, yeah, you're spot on. And now we've got some good discussion of how they make it maybe six dollars instead of the five or whatever the number is. Or you might find out that your feelings are just that they're feelings. The facts yeah. don't don't support or so you know substantiate the feelings. The feelings are great, but who cares? Yeah, exactly. I don't care how you feel necessarily, right? At this point, tell me what really is happening. Let's let's get going. And the other thing that we often find is the discounting behavior of a salesperson. So the way I would say that is, you know, and, you know, Brian Tracy said, nothing happens till a sale is made, right? Because when a sale is made, it's like your revenue coming in. Exactly. And so I really like salespeople, but the conversations are different at the beginning of the period versus towards the end of the period. Yes. Right. Hey, let, let's get the revenue in. Like, you know, if, whether that's profitable or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's a revenue number we're shooting for. Exactly. It's a revenue. And what we've realized is that, you know, the discounting behavior of some of the reps is really, really bad for the company's profit. Right. But that's a company problem because, you know, what you told the rep to do exactly what the rep's doing. Exactly. Get me revenue. You didn't say get me profitable revenue. You just said get me revenue. Yeah. So if you want revenue, I'll get you revenue. I didn't say we we're going to make any money, <laughs> but I'll get you the revenue. Right? You keep trying to tell the company that. lost money, and you're right on. Doesn't Kenny. matter. That's not what you asked me. You said get me revenue. I got you revenue. And you didn't say profitable. And what margins, by the way? Exactly. Um, but again, people just don't get down those paths where you got to remember that. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole function of the business is that spread between cogs and revenues of the world you live in. You don't bank sales. I wish we could. We don't. I mean, and off like a, a really concrete example, we we um for one of the companies that I work for, we we ran Black Friday last year. I wasn't around, but we they ran a Black Friday sale and um they picked up a whole bunch of new users, you know, bought in a you know, kind of buy two, get one, right? You know, so pretty common increased yeah, consumption, right. you know, that's market basket, blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 right? But then, you know, so this year we said, oh, let's run it again. But when we looked at um, something complicated but simple in lifetime value, you went like, you know, because because in the old in the other metrics that we talked about, like cost of acquisition, you're kind of like, OK, so, well, if you buy two and you get one free, the cost of acquisition is the free. Right. So we gave away one so they could. Yeah, you that's know, they and they gave away one. It's a high right? cost. Of acquisition. Acquisition. You're right. But when we look at lifetime value none of these folks stuck around they they took the two for one and then never bought again no. right so all of a sudden you go well lifetime value is shit on this item right so yes i drove consumption so there's a temporary temporal effect to doing what i did and as long as we're all okay with that we're all okay with that right but then we came back this year and went hey that worked really well but actually it didn't right like we didn't actually bring anyone that stayed so do we want this or not right like you know, but again, without the data, I, I on that note, I People actually fault for, for the customer for that, right? Because you offered them a deal and they took the deal. Yeah. And they, they should take the deal. And if they don't want it, and all yeah. the you know, customer maybe has done, I'll just wait for the next deal. Yeah. 
But even in that case, the salesperson is not at fault, right? Because they're no. like, you said to sell. So I'm fucking I selling, sold, right? So I sold it. So if you if you guys thought it wasn't going to be profitable, you should have told me, don't do that. That's a terrible deal, right? But you didn't say that. So I just kept selling it, right? Like that's right. what they're supposed to do, right? Like, and you know, Phil, uh, like I'm just use, using that as an example and using some more examples yeah. on top of that. Let's say your profitability was 40%, right? Uh, for example, just for just as an example, forty yeah. percent profit. Well, you just gave, you acquire you gave away thirty three percent because it was buy two get one free. Right. So thirty three percent right off. You know the thirty three percent came off the forty, plus you compensated the salesperson. One hundred percent. Some of them got paid to do that. Yeah, and some of them are paid to do that, right? Or the cost of the marketing system, right. the program, and all of that. By the time we look at that, it was a very unprofitable business. Right. Now, for those who are doing that, if that's because you need to blow inventory, you want to turn inventory into cash, and you've got a small bubble that you really have to do something, it may be the right decision. Right. But again, the data will tell you that. Exactly. You look at it and say, okay, I needed to blow yeah. inventory. Guys, you know what? In an everyday situation, we'll never do this again. Thank God we did that because we turned a lot of nothing into cash, which we needed. No problem. I get it. Yay team. Yep. Light her up. Kenny, by the way, I'm buying you beer or your favorite drink or tea or coffee next time up in Toronto, which is in April. No, he's I, Vancouver. I, I like the beer. He's on your side of the world. I'm in Vancouver. Oh, he's in Vancouver. I mean, he's well, that's a short hop away. Where are you? I'm in San Francisco. Oh, you're San Francisco. Okay. Yeah, if you come up this area, well, if you yeah. come up in April, like he's here in April. Yeah, and I do the gross grind next time. Like I promised myself that next time I was in Vancouver, I would do the gross grind. Okay, well, I'll meet you at the bottom or the top. <laughs> I think the I, I didn't say I was gonna. You know, you can take. Well, you're gonna look at it from the tram. Oh, okay. I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll be. I'm on the same grind you're on then. Yeah. <laughs> Except I think you get away from the two of you. I'll do the I'll meet you at the grind. bottom. But yeah. <laughs> I'll just do the climb. I'm I'm good with it. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I took my mom in a helicopter right up there, man. Oh, that's wonderful. That's I mean, if on a clear day, wow. Yeah, it was a clear day. It's a wow. It's yeah. spectacular. Yeah, and I I mean to do the helicopter ride in the in the Vancouver area as well. Yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah, it's God's country. It really is. It is. Um, Namesh, we're almost out of time. Thank you for doing this. Um, Thank if, you. If people want to find you, where do they find you? So the best way to do that is to send me an email. They could call me, but an email is the best. Uh, and my email address is Jaspal, J-A-S-P-A-L, at gainops.com. That is J-A-S-P-A-L at G-A-I-N-O-P-S dot com. Yeah. That's the best way to do that. If somebody wants to call me and to avoid it, just going into voicemail or so the best oh, way to do it. Don't leave your phone number. Okay. Don't leave your phone number. Yeah. It's an email. Or go to the website, right there because, put the know, website link down below to www.gameops.com. So yeah. Perfect. Down below. Okay. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Bill. Thank you, yeah. Ken. No, it was my thank pleasure. You. It was very nice meeting you finally. I've heard enough about you. So it was very nice to find the name and face. Likewise. Likewise. And by the way, uh, so not for public distribution, but dude, you owe me a beer as well for stealing Phil. No. Yeah. <laughs> I never said share these. That's, that's your problem. <laughs> I always tell people everybody should have a Phil in their arsenal, but not my Phil. <laughs> Get your own Phil. I don't care yeah. if you knew him longer either. Too bad. <laughs> Let me let me change that. And Phil would say everybody should have a Kenny on their arsenal, but not my Kenny. Not uh, likely, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm okay with that, Nimesh. I know my limitations in life, and I'm good with it. Nobody gets my Phil. Get your own. You are a good man, Kenny. You guys are crazy. Get off this call, both of you. Damn it. Right, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It was nice meeting you. Seriously, hopefully we catch Thank up. God. If you come up to the city, um, like, do let me know, and we'll catch a beer on commercial drive or something. It'd be awesome. Cool. Yeah. Look seriously. Forward Look forward to it. Awesome, okay. buddy. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, Kenny. Bye. Take care. Bye. Go hang on. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs>
Uh, Interesting, just, right? You know what it is? It's such okay. Just so people are still listening, fuck! I hate doing these this type of podcast on the first of the month because you know what I'm going to do when we hang up? Yeah, because you're anxious about everything. All I've got is this anxiety building in me right now that I've got two companies that the whole rest of the day is going to be spreadsheet. So, yeah, which I'm okay with because once they're done, then I like to dig in and say, okay, what's going on? How are we going to do yeah. this? But it's just like data crunching. Man, yeah. So if you're not doing like it, might, I, I yeah. I mean, I wish we on both companies we were in size where we could probably. Well, we probably are, but probably the amount of time I spend, we could probably get someone else to do it, and just I'd rather spend more time and just just straight analysis. So, so even like this will make it into the recording, but as a fractional, I'm actually going to try and figure out if there's a way that the next time I go to a company, I just bring the mesh along. Right. Because you know, then yeah. there's lots of arguments to be had where you start thinking about this in a different way where you go, look at I maybe I'll work with whatever infrastructure you have, but I gotta bring this guy because he's gonna yeah. help me with the first six reports that I need yeah. to be able to show you guys that in fact I've got, you know, that I'm you know, because the pressure on fractionals is as soon as I start working, I gotta figure out how to like well, you got to do what we're doing. I got to, I got to show to, some return, to right? I got to show that I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of like one of those things, right? So, no, totally yeah. crazy. Um, listen, we got to go. We got. Oh, oh my God. We have two minutes. Goodbye. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. Okay. Thanks for listening. Bye. Ciao, ciao.